Moving on. So, last week, last week, ladies and gentlemen, we did not, in fact, have time on the show to discuss a pretty major story, and that major story was the resignation of the Pope. The, the retirement of the Pope. The depoping of the Pope. And so, before we move on, um, we are going to be talking about the Pope, and so therefore we are going to be talking about sexual assault here. Uh, so if there's anyone who may have triggers, you may want to skip this next segment, because we are going to be discussing sexual assault. Now, many of you know, I am an atheist. However, I was born and raised... Catholic. In fact, I went to 12 years of Catholic school in Omaha, Nebraska. Don't worry, I'm fine. I, I'm fine. Thank you, though. Uh, but, but seriously, though, my wife, uh, my wife is a progressive Catholic. Now, the Vatican, the Vatican says that the Pope is retiring for health reasons, and that very well may be the case. The Pope is 85 years old. There have been numerous accounts of his declining health. It was recently revealed that the Pope secretly had a pacemaker. That's right, he had a pacemaker. People didn't know that. Well, which I, if I remember, if I remember my Catholic upbringing, I believe that's called a lie of omission. But, but anyway, there is some speculation that the Pope's resignation may not just be strictly for his health. There actually may have something to, it may have something to do with documents that are being released in a Rhode Island lawsuit against an organization that is called the Legion of Christ. Now, the Legion of Christ uh, was led by the now-deceased Father Marcel Marcel. I think that's how you say his name. Marcel Marcel. Marcel Mas Marcel Marcel. Marcel Marcel. Whatever is it. Father Marcel. Uh, well, he has, he has a name that's kind of hard to say and, and that I, that I can't say very well. However, this was a bad guy. This was a, a, a priest who raped and sexually abused numerous children. And that, that's not funny. Um, he was very close to the previous Pope, Pope John Paul II, and he was also very close to then Cardinal Ratzinger before he became Pope Benedict. There may be, uh, there, there are people who are saying that there may in fact be some damning documents revealed in this lawsuit. But the, we, we, the truth is, we do not know that yet. We do not know, and you know, we may never know. It, it may just be that his health has gotten so bad that he wants to, wants to stop being Pope and wants to retire. Which leads me to a recent Reuters article on the matter that I'd like to discuss a bit. So, look, no matter what, no matter what, if there is some, I don't know, some smoking gun document out there against Ratzinger in this lawsuit, or if there's some smoking gun uh, document that the Pope's butler leaked, uh, no matter what, no matter what, if there is something new, or if there's not something new, as Pope John Paul II's enforcement officer, Cardinal Ratzinger, who then became Benedict, oversaw the cover-up and the moving and protection of countless child rapists. Many people, myself included, would like to see him punished and, in fact, imprisoned for his actions. However, that appears... That, that, that appears to be very unlikely, because Reuters reports that after the Pope's resignation, Ratzinger will in fact remain living in the Vatican. And by doing so, the Vatican will provide him with legal immunity. That's right, just by living in the Vatican, the former Pope is going to get legal immunity. Immunity. I don't know if he's going to be able to keep a butler or what, but he's going to be getting he's he's going to be getting immunity. This stems from something called the Lateran Pax, which, uh, reading from Reuters, provides uh, him with immunity. Quote: While he is in the Vatican, and even if he makes jaunts into Italy as a Vatican citizen, the 1929 Lateran Pax between Italy and the Holy See, which established Vatican City as a sovereign state, uh, said Vatican City would be quote invariably and in every event considered as neutral and inviolable territory. So, what that means, folks, is essentially, essentially, the Pope will remain a Vatican citizen to prevent himself 
from being prosecuted. Just like Jesus hid to avoid his prosecution. Oh wait, no, I forgot. Jesus didn't hide from his accusers. He met them knowing that he was going to be tried and ultimately executed. I wonder, I wonder if the Pope is going to reflect on that fact as he hides and he cowers and he refuses to be held accountable for his crimes. I want to go back to the Reuters article because there were a couple of quotes in it uh, from Vatican officials officials on the matter, which really do kind of sum up the sum up the whole thing for me. This is from Reuters. This is a Vatican official quote: "His continued presence in the Vatican is necessary. Otherwise, he might be defenseless. He wouldn't have his immunity, his prerogatives, his security if he is anywhere else." End quote. Do you believe that? Do you believe he wouldn't have his immunity? Oh no, his immunity. Just the sheer arrogance and entitlement and disconnect from the rest of the world, from the rest of the people. In that very quote, his immunity, because he is entitled to his immunity. You know who didn't have immunity? You know who didn't have immunity? The children who were raped. They had no immunity from those predators that the Pope protected and shielded and moved to other parishes so they could do it again and again and again. Those children had absolutely no immunity. Oh, and then, and, and his prerogatives, just like Bobby Brown or something, it's his prerogative. The Pope can do what he wants to do. Another Vatican source said, if he lived anywhere else, this is a quote, if he lived anywhere else, then we might have those crazies who are filing lawsuits or some magistrate might arrest him like other former heads of state have been for alleged acts where he was the head of state. End quote. You heard me right. This this Vatican, this Vatican person actually said, those crazies who are filing lawsuit. Those crazy, I don't even know, I don't even know, frankly, how to respond to that. Seriously, people, no amount of rage on my part can counter just the pure evil dismissiveness that is in that sentence. I mean, what, maybe you children wouldn't have been raped if you weren't so crazy. Maybe you wouldn't, maybe you wouldn't be seeking justice if you weren't so crazy. All of these accusers, these accusers are crazy, says the person, the person de- defending the man who wears a three foot tall pointy hat. It's not the man in the goofy tall hat who claims to be infallible, who claims to speak for Jesus Christ himself, who also shielded child rapists. It's not him who's crazy. It's those who accuse him who are crazy. And the sad fact, the sad fact is the Pope's probably going to get away with it. He's going to get away with it. He'll, He'll spend his remaining years living comfortably, with his immunity, with his prerogatives, under the mighty shield of the Vatican. And to me, that is the most crazy thing of all. We'll be right back. 